Hello to all my wonderful friends and viewers on TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube. I appreciate each and every one of you so very much. Thank you so much for tuning in to this video. Uh, we are getting ready to celebrate our 34th birthday. That's right, April the 18th, 2024. Yours truly will be turning 34 years old. The Lord sure has been good to us and blessed us so much. I think I want to thank everyone everyone for the birthday cards and the birthday wishes. Thank you so very much. And I'm so blessed because I'm getting to preach revival this week, the week of my birthday, April the 18th. Of course, my birthday's on a Thursday uh, this year, 2024, and I'll be 34 years old. So we thank the Lord for another year of life. And again, we thank God for all the birthday wishes and the birthday cards and all the love and the kindness that we have received so far. Of course, that's still a day or two yet to come, a day or two yet to come as of the making of this video. But again, we appreciate all our wonderful viewers on TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube. We thank God for all our viewers and all our friends. We appreciate you so much spending time with us. And my voice is a little bit rough and raspy. I apologize for that, but we have been in revival and are still in revival. And Lord's willing, we'll continue to be in revival the rest of this week and maybe even longer. I really don't know about that. But uh, anyway, uh, Jeremiah chapter number 32, I wanted to share a couple of scriptures with you out of Jeremiah 32. Now, I want to look at verse number 17 and verse number 27 and just look at these two verses. Verse number 17 of Jeremiah 32, And Lord God, behold, thou hast made the heaven and the earth by thy great power and strength stretched out arm, and there is nothing too hard for thee. Then ten verses later in Jeremiah 32, verse 27, Behold, I am the Lord, the God of all flesh. Is there anything too hard for me? I'd like to have a little devotional video, and I'd like to speak just for a few moments on the thought, limiting the limitless God. Limiting the limitless God. God. Now, uh, I want to say that Jeremiah was a great prophet of God. There's a lot of folks that would deny the ministry of Jeremiah. Jeremiah had a ministry that extended well over 40 years, well over 40 years, yet he never had one convert. He never seen one convert come to the knowledge of the truth. Uh, God has blessed me. I've been preaching almost 21 years, and I've been blessed to see several come to the salvation and to the saving knowledge of God. Jeremiah had a ministry over 40 years and never saw one convert come to the knowledge of the truth. There would be a lot of folks that would doubt uh, the ministry of the prophet Jeremiah, and there would be many that would wonder if he was even called. And God knew that, and that's why in the very first chapter of this precious book, Jeremiah chapter 1, God, God looked at Jeremiah and he said, Before thou was born, I called thee, and whilst thou wast still in thy mother's womb, I ordained thee to be a prophet unto me, leaving no doubt whatsoever that God had called and ordained the prophet Jeremiah for a work. Oftentimes, we uh, look at a ministry, and we use different things to uh, gauge if a ministry is successful or not, but uh, God doesn't work that way. So, uh, Jeremiah, he looked at the nation of Israel, and he showed them their problem in Jeremiah 2.13. As God spoke through his pen, God said, my people have committed two evils. Number one, they've forsaken me, the well of living waters. And number two, they've hewn out cisterns, broken cisterns that can hold, hold no water. So that was the problem. The solution was found in Jeremiah chapter 6, verse number 16. And the scripture declared there, uh, thus saith the Lord, stand ye in the ways and see and ask for the old paths where is the good way and you shall find rest unto your souls. That was the remedy for the problem. But 
Uh, here's what they had to say in response to that. We will not walk therein. And as a result of that, we see that judgment came upon the nation of Israel through the Gentile empowerment, through the Babylonians and all of that. And we don't have time to get into great detail. With that, we have a time limit ourselves. I'm glad there's no limits and restrictions and barriers on God. But nevertheless, Jeremiah is known as the weeping prophet. He gets that title and that name from Jeremiah chapter 9 verse number 1 where he states oh that my head were as waters and my eyes a fountain of tears that I might weep both day and night for the slain daughter of my people so here in Jeremiah 32 Jeremiah is in prison for the word of God for the testimony of the Lord Jesus Christ and we see here that he is in prison and God has spoke to him while he's in prison and told him that he's going to send judgment upon the nation of Israel and destroy the land of Jerusalem, and he's going to carry many of the Jews captive into that land of Babylon, that Gentile empowerment. And then he tells Jeremiah in prison to get Baruch uh, to buy his uncle's field. Jeremiah's uncle's field is available, and God wants Jeremiah to purchase that field. Well, Jeremiah, he begins to question God. He says, that's a foolish investment. I mean, if you're going to destroy this land, uh, and you've revealed to me that you're going to do so. You're going to use the Babylonians, the Gentile empowerment, to bring judgment upon your people. And you're going to destroy this land, and you want me to purchase property in this land from my uncle that he has up for sale? What a foolish investment. But in Jeremiah 32, 15, God looked at Jeremiah, and he said, Houses, fields, vineyards shall be inhabited in this land again. God was looking past the captivity, past the 70 years, past the exile when the Jews were to return back to their homeland and need some land where they could stay. Well, uh, God looked at Jeremiah and he said, I'm the God of all flesh. Is there anything too hard for me? Jeremiah even said, there is nothing too hard for God. And so I want to challenge everyone that's viewing this video on TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube. Let's take the limits and the restrictions and the barriers off God. Sure enough, 70 years later, uh, sure enough, after that exile period expired, they came back to that land that Jeremiah purchased from his uncle uh, through the use of Baruch. And so uh, God knew exactly what the future held. And I want to say, some of you may be worried about your future and about what's going to happen in days to come. Let me just encourage you that God has sustained you in the past. He's brought you to where you are in your present, and that very same God is going to sustain you in days ahead. Just, just put your faith and confidence in Him. If you're not saved, please do that. If you have backslidden on the Lord, come to Him. He loves you. And us who are saved, let's continue to serve Him faithfully with a pure heart. I begin to think, and i got a limited time here, but let's take the limits. I mean, God has no limits. He has no restrictions. He has no barriers. The only limits and restrictions that he has is those that we place upon him. I want to challenge all of us to take the limits and the restrictions and the barriers off of God, and let's allow God to be God. In Luke chapter number one, in Luke chapter number one, the angel Gabriel came to Mary and gave her the message that she was highly favored among women, and that that was in her womb was conceived of the Holy Holy Ghost, and that the Lord Jesus Christ was going to be transported through her womb for nine months. And Mary looked and said, how can this thing be, seeing I know not a man? She was limiting the limitless God, so to speak. In Luke one thirty-seven, here's what the angel responded back and said, with men these things are impossible, but with God all things are possible. When God looked at Abraham and Sarah and told them they're going to have a child in their old age, they even laughed. Amen. Uh, when the prophecy first come, 75 years old and 65, 25 years they would wait on that prophecy to be fulfilled. Abraham 100 and Sarah 90. But God fulfilled his word and he said, is there anything too hard for me? Well, I have a time limit on here. I wish I didn't, but I just wanted to share a short devotional with you and let you know that we need to take the limits off this limitless God. He has no limits. He has 
has no restrictions other than what we place on him. Take the limits off the limitless God. Again, thank you so much for all the birthday wishes. April the 18th, we will be 34 years young. Lord's willing, that's still a day or two to go as of the making of this video. But April the 18th, 2024 is our 34th birthday. God bless you. We love you.